Throughout time, roller coasters have come and gone. Only some become legends for their intensity and thrills. Each and every year, coaster fans like you venture to the parks, searching for that one special ride that stands out above the rest. You submitted your rankings, and now it's time to reveal the group of elite roller coasters that you have voted as the best of the best. Coaster Deck Uncut is proud to present the return of the Really 32. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Thrilling 32. It's time for the Steel Coasters this week, and uh, who, now, who is the, oh, now, okay, I, okay, 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 here's, <laughs> here's the story here, folks, I've got to be very candid with you, Andy was so upset with how many European coasters uh, were in the Steel Coasters specifically this year, that he told me last week he was boycotting the Thrilling 32, so Andy... I see your boycott, and I raise you a fucking Brit. We've got Alex Baker all the way from the UK joining us for round one of the Steel. This is the first time we've ever had somebody besides Andy and I on a Thrilling Thirty Two show that wasn't that wasn't that year's champion. So, Alex, what do you think? You're here for the Thrilling Thirty Two. Well, I, I'm sorry to disappoint people, probably, but you know, I'm happy to be here. But you know, so thanks for having me on. The opinions will be much better tonight. I, I have a feeling than they normally are. Uh, well, lots of good critical thinking here between the two of us tonight, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far, but maybe a different perspective to what Andy <laughs> normally offers, right? So, uh, yeah. It's not just the brackets we're taking over now. We're taking over the show as well. So That's right. So uh, we decided to go all in on Europe. You've got your Nemesis shirt on there. I've got my Energy Representing. Land Coaster. Coaster Holic shirt on, right? Where is it? There, there it is. Energy Landy. It's got all Energy the Landy. Got all the rides on the back. Energy Landy. So we're gonna we we've got a couple of rides from Energy Landia to to talk about tonight. We'll get to those we in do. a little bit. But um, so th- here here's what's interesting about having you on here is um, you know, obviously. I've been the one who sort of you know heads heads the poll every year. I know the results right, and I I try and you know. I try and play it pretty even keeled so that I'm not giving anything away. Right. There's some years Andy has known the results. Other years he hasn't when we've been recording, but this will, I don't have a clue. <laughs> well, that's the thing. this will be the very first time that somebody on one of these shows does not know at all what's coming. So, you know, we talk about the last 12 years, you know, people getting angry at us uh, for the results. We may see your live reactions to your bracket going down in flames here. Yeah, I think that's probably likely as well, because I think this year's steel is looking pretty tough, man. You've uh, you've you've picked out some pretty hard matchups here and some that personally were pretty difficult for me. Uh, I was, was going to say, I think there, that was on purpose. But... I was going to say there's a few that you personally probably aren't too happy uh, with us about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> we'll get uh, to those, I think. Yeah, we time. will. And I, I think one of the most challenging ones is, is coming up uh, at the, be- you know, uh, one of the first couple here, I, actually a couple of them. Uh, so it doesn't I, get much easier as you go on, mate. I tell you. <laughs> no, no, that was that was kind of the point, right? <laughs> that was what we were going for. So uh, before we jump into the first uh group here uh we'll we'll quick go over what we what we did we did the ride word choice awards everybody was voting back in the fall and into the winter uh we calculated all the results from all the coaster rankings we spit out the top 32 wood and 32 steel coasters into a bracket we then diabolically matched them up uh doing the old head to head we're doing the head to head again it's no it's no coaster rumble this year back to the old head to head bracket styles we did the wood uh, that dropped a couple of days ago. So uh, if you haven't seen that episode, check that one out uh, to see how you did in your wood. The wood brackets, people did pretty decent. I, I mean, there were some good ones, some bad ones, but I, I think most people did, you know, are pretty pleased with how they did in the first round of the wood wood ones so far. But uh, there's there's a couple of surprises in there. I didn't do too badly. I think the, the wood generally, if you've been doing it a little while, you, you kind of get used to what to expect from the wood. There's 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 less movement in the wood, right? But we, we've got a whole load of new coasters in here, ones that are back in that have been in before. So, yeah, this 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 steel bracket's proven to be tricky in the last couple of years. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what's uh, what it throws out. 
Yeah, it's it's and it's only going to get trickier, right? Uh, so what do you what do you say we get started? Uh, we'll get started with the Draken Fire Group here, and the first matchup in the Draken Fire Group was Iron Guazi from Bush Gardens Tampa against Twisted Timbers from Kings Dominion. Now, now these are two coasters that have both in the past been in the top five. Iron Guazi, uh, more recently. Um, obviously just, just being new a year or two ago, uh, last yeah. year, Iron Gwazi was number five and Twisted Timbers was all the way down at number 17, although it, it did debut much, much higher. Um, and you know, one thing we went through in the wood, uh, first round, uh, we were still accepting brackets at the time that we recorded that. So we didn't have all the data, but, uh, we have like full Qualtrics data from all the, uh, submissions now and uh 95% of the submissions picking Iron Guazi in this one and I don't know if that's too big of a surprise do you I don't think so I mean the rankings last year although I don't think it's interesting because just rides do well in their first year right traditionally and um I think people were expecting maybe a bit more out of Iron Guazi last year so coming at number five I think it broke a few hearts last year, including mine, because I had it to go all the way last year I thought shiny new toy syndrome so I was on Iron Guazi in the so that'd be a mistake, but yeah, well, I think yeah. Um, we, we've talked about that quite a bit with this poll, you know, um, Leviathan nearly won in its first year, um, Fury 325 won in its first year, uh, Outlaw Run and Lightning Rod both won in it, their first years on the wood side of things, uh, Velocicoaster won in its first year before being taken down by Steel Vengeance last year, so I think a lot of people were kind of like, okay, Iron Gwazi is one of those rides that's going to win its first year, but might not win after that, and it, it came up not only short, but quite a bit short, um, yeah. and well, there, more than half the people picked Iron Gwazi to win last year. Um, but I suppose it, the it, question is, have, have more people been out there and ridden it now that hadn't ridden it and ranked it up? Or have more people gone out there and re-ridden it and maybe got over that new ride syndrome? You know, Because I, I think that's what happened to me. I rode it again this year, and I wasn't quite as blown away as I was first time around. It's, um, yeah, sometimes yeah. that first impression can really get you. And then after you ride it 5, 10, 15, a million more times, you know, it's you still be like, okay, yeah, it's really good. But, you know, maybe it's not as as great as I thought it was that first time. And maybe some people got back and rode Steel Vengeance after they rode Iron Gwazi or yeah. something. And they're like, oh, okay, maybe it's still Steel Vengeance. It, it's, re it's really hard to tell. Um, but in this case, it is Iron Gwazi that uh, knocks off Twisted Timbers, moves on to the next round. So I don't think that's a terrible terrible surprise here um no I, it, twisted timbers is a very good ride but i don't think it can compete with those sort of larger hybrids we're seeing now really it's um it's a great ride but we, we can see that trends going 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 down now isn't it sure so. yeah i i think so um okay so iron guazi is going to take on the winner of our next matchup here and this is one this is another interesting one because we've got yeah. a new, new ride here i mean we had a couple of new rmcs this year uh, in Wildcats Revenge, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but also Airy Force One, um, which, you know, Airy Force One opened early last year and had got a lot of people's attention early on. And then Wildcats Revenge opens up and then all of a sudden, oh, OK, people are maybe liking this one a little bit better. Um, but Airy Force One, a lot of people still wrote it over the summer. I wrote it in July, really, really enjoyed it. I'm slightly partial to Wildcats Revenge, uh, but Airy Force One is still a phenomenal ride. And it's going up against Helix from Lisaberg, which is one that you and I rode together uh, this past year. Is. is one that I think, this is one that I think we were both cautiously optimistic about it's like okay the some of these mock rides don't really deliver on the intensity but i think we both found that helix was one that did yeah i, I was worried it was going to be icon but on a hill right and it just <laughs> wasn't <laughs> it, was, it was so much more than that it just it, it's uh yeah i i think it's a bit of a, it's a masterpiece i think helix really the way it's built into that hillside yeah the elements flow fantastically well on that ride it's um it really does yeah, have I, a lot of Maverick in it too, I think. It does. And and despite the launches being a bit tame, it doesn't lack intensity in spots. You don't get the intensity from the launches, but it's got a really good mix in there. And I think it's a long ride. It's yeah. um yeah, it's I like Helix a lot, right? I haven't ridden Airy Force yet, so I'll lean on you for the uh for the opinion there, really. But to me yeah. I always felt Airy Force it, it looks a great ride, don't get me wrong, but it looks very cut and paste, if you know what I mean. It's kind of RMC yeah. elements kind of 
back to back. I, I prefer the flow of wild, like something like Wildcat, which I think is fantastic, which we'll get onto later. But yeah, yeah. I think Harry Force One's also got a bit of that shiny new toy syndrome as well. A lot of people were going crazy for it. It could do very well. Well, there are multiple people who actually picked Airy Force One out of this group to go all the way to the final four. And I think they're leaning okay. on the Chinese New Toy Syndrome, knowing that Iron Gwazi was a disappointment last year. They're thinking it might drop and that Airy Force might really debut highly. Um, and uh, I mean, Airy Force One, th this was a little bit of a surprise to me. I I'm not surprised that Airy Force One was the majority pick here, but 72% and picked eight airy force one here so you know almost, almost i wasn't one of them almost three oh helix. you picked helix did you i did okay. probably a bit of personal bias on that one sure but... well if i was just going off my personal rankings i have helix a little bit higher i'd be picking helix as well helix was 14 last year so you it know was. you've got to kind of ask yourself twisted timbers was 17 uh we had iron guazi at five you know i could see airy force being somewhere in between those two and then the whole does helix move up does helix move down there's a lot of different factors at play on well danny we, we all know that you and i and the coaster crew visited sweden this year and rode helix and the coaster crew effect is strong in this poll as far as i'm aware so it it, see, it seems to be it seems to i'm be. banking on the love for helix being strong all right. Well, let's find out who won. Um, moving on to the next round to take on Iron Gwazi is Helix from Lisaberg. It is Helix. So uh, the 28% <laughs> that went with Helix, uh, congratulations. You've got that one right. So, uh, we, we, you know, Andy and I talked in the selection show, you know, when it comes down to just one or two points being the difference and yeah. you know, the winner of the poll is probably going to be someone who has you know both champions right unless there's a big upset on either side i mean steel vengeance and voyage are obviously the two favorites so a lot of people are picking that pair so unless there's an upset that nobody has predicted these matchups in this first round are going to matter and getting one or two points here or there in these first round matchups you know could be the difference between you know winning the contest here and you know not doing very, very well at all so um, that makes me feel even better about picking helix and i'm trying not to look too smug so <laughs> well, <laughs> um so let's let's move on to the next matchup where we had fly from fantasia land uh going up against untamed from wallaby holland and uh this is one you have been on both of these i have not uh i've only have. been untamed my love for untamed is is well documented um you obviously know i mean i know of fly haven't ridden fly it was number 29 last year to untamed's number two um 88 yeah. percent of the people picking untamed in, in this matchup so i i pose to you the question does fly have any business pulling off an upset <laughs> are you sure you're not Andy? probably not not in this poll i don't think it's not in this poll. It, fly is a fantastic ride right it's it, it's like a triumph of engineering like rookberg is insane right it it yeah. depends what you look for in a coaster if theming and everything that goes with the coaster is your thing then i could see people ranking fly over untamed but not in this poll untamed is uh too strong in this poll and it, it's a great ride i mean i i think it's slightly overranked in this poll but we've talked about that it was my num. it was my number one right it's not like i don't like the ride it was yeah. my number one for a little while but it was my first rmc as well i've ridden quite a lot more since yeah. and yeah yeah i'd be surprised if untamed doesn't move on uh, it is Untamed that moves on. Untamed knocks off Fly. So, uh, you know, we had a chance at three RMCs going three for three here, uh, but uh, Helix spoiled that party. Um, so we've got Iron Gwazi, Helix, Untamed, and the winner of the Battle of Virginia, uh, Pantheon yeah. of Peach Gardens Williamsburg versus Intimidator 305 from King's Dominion, which I don't know what the hell it's going to be called next year. It's not going to be called that. <laughs> it's going to be called Thunderstriker 305, right? <laughs> Thunderstriker 305, uh, whatever it's going to be called. So I guess this will be the last year that we're talking about Intimidator 305. Um, End so, of an era. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, so last year, uh, Pantheon was 15 and I-305 had dropped to 26, the lowest ranking ever for I-305, which was quite a shock. I yeah. mean, this is a former champion here. And uh, people seem to be leaning heavily 
uh, on last year's uh, rankings because uh, two thirds of the voters uh, this year picked Pantheon to move on. And uh, I, I didn't look at your specific submission. So who, who, who did you pick in this one? I did pick Pantheon again. It's one that actually going back to again, it's kind of got me sitting here now kind of questioning that because again, I think Pantheon's probably got a bit of a shiny new toy thing last year. It was the first time. Well, first time a lot of people probably had got, was it the first time in last year? I think it was, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was first year, yeah. So, yeah, I think Pantheon could easily drop a few spots and intimidate her fans, might have, you know, upvoted. They might not have liked what happened last year. They might have got upvoted again. But I think Intimidate isn't about the right spot. But mm -hmm. I, I have it higher than Pantheon myself. Not that far ahead of it, but I, I actually have them right yeah. next to each other. I'm, I can't remember which one I have higher. I, I have them. Yeah. The same tier for sure. I just don't know which one I actually. They're have. in that region. So yeah, I I couldn't call this one. I mean, I I think Pantheon, it's a good ride. It's it, you know, it's it wasn't as strong as I was expecting. Right, the launch sequence is a lot of fun, but I think the rest of the layout. I don't know. It wasn't quite as strong as I wanted it to be. Like the outer banks, like Condor's one's far better. The, the, the second half, it just feels a bit short to me, Pantheon. I wouldn't be surprised if I've got this one wrong at all. But That's true. I, I didn't think about that because you've written Conda, which which we'll talk about later, which uh, is obviously much longer. And even though it's got a lift hill, you know, pa Pantheon is on the shorter side when you compare it to rides, you know, like Helix and like a Taiga, you know, to talk about some other rides we're going to get to later. I don't think you feel shortchanged on Pantheon. Like the whole experience, the swing launch adds a lot to the to the ride time. I think I just I, I just feel personally after the top hat, it's kind of over very quickly after the top hat, right? It does feel you know, that way. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I I, I I could. I think this one was tougher to pick than than maybe it was on the surface. So yeah, I I think so too. Uh, so moving on, completing the Draken Fire group is. Intimidator 305 from King's Dominion uh, has resurged and has knocked off Pantheon. So the Battle of Virginia uh, goes to I-305 this year. So Iron Gwazi will take on Helix in the next round and Untamed will take on Intimidator 305. So uh, so you ended up going three for four in that group there. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, probably the different three for four than I expected, maybe, but I, I'll take that. That's that's not too bad. Yeah, three for four isn't bad uh, in these steel groups. If if you went 12 for 16 on the night, you, you're probably not feeling too terrible about that. Uh, oh, awesome. Let's see. Uh, so why don't we move on to the Turbulence group, uh, group number two, and we, we finished the first group with the Battle of Virginia. We're going to start the uh, next group here with the Battle of Hershey, Pennsylvania. We've got Skyrush and Wildcat's Revenge, the old favorite, the decade old favorite Skyrush, which was number 16 last year, uh, certainly beatable uh, by a new RMC. Um, but Skyrush has also been a top five ride in the past. So, and it's been very, yeah. very. Uh, recently as well that had a resurgence for the last couple of years it was yeah. as high as was it five through three years back was that it's... yeah the is the sky rush ranking has been extremely erratic over the year over the years um it's been as it's been out of the thrilling 32 it's been in the 20s it's been you know top five uh recently like you said and it'll be interesting to see how the news of these new restraints uh you know the park opens just a couple weeks yeah it'll be interesting to see how these new restraints are received because we saw when maverick got its new restraints years back uh it jumped up in this poll almost immediately and continued to rise for many years so it'll be interesting to see if skyrush uh sees a little bit of a, a surge uh this coming year uh but yeah. uh well, I'll be honest. I, I I never found the restraints an issue on Sky Rush. You know, it's, uh, it it's not great, sure, but over fairly quickly. You know, you're. It's not like a four minute ride that you're dealing that with. That yeah. it's about what. Well, that's what I mean. My my issue with Sky Rush is the the slightly underwhelming layout and length of the ride rather than yeah. the trains. Right. It's um yeah. yeah. Sure, the drop's good. The airtime's strong, but it sort of finishes with a whimper to me. I, I don't know. I'm not a big Sky Rush fan. Let's yeah, put it that way. I was a Sky Rush fan. I mean, I've said this over and over. I was a Sky Rush fan the year it opened, and I really, really loved it. And with rides like Wildcat's Revenge, like Iron Gwazi, like Twisted Timbers, there's been so many rides that just do what Sky Rush does better. 
um, these days. And, you know, that's not a knock on Skyrush. That's that's just how the industry has evolved, uh, you know, because RMC was just coming onto the scene uh, as Skyrush was built. So that's not a knock on Skyrush necessarily. I think it speaks to the progression of uh, the coaster designs that we've gotten. Yeah. Um, but people going on the side of Wildcat here, 81 to 19 in terms of percentage here. So overwhelmingly people going Wildcat's Revenge here, that surprises me a little, actually, though. Maybe it's quite that strong. Because when if you look at Skyrush, I don't know. It's it, it's always, like you say, it's always done well in this poll. I'm not a surprised that Wildcat's that Revenge is favored, was favored, but I'm surprised that it was that wide of a gap. I, I would agree with yeah. you. Well, I mean, it, it, people expect these RMCs to come in hot now, right? P people are seeing the new RMCs, they're thinking, oh, that's a top 10 ride. That, that's well, a top 10 ride for, well, for is all there of anything, <laughs> Is there anything to be said for Air Force One losing to Helix just a moment ago? Well, I mean, ridership is a thing, right? I mean, just because we've ridden Wildcat's Revenge, it doesn't mean all the voters have. And, you know, if not as many people have got to Hershey Park this year than we anticipate, then maybe Skyrush wins this match you know it's... Well, and wildcats revenge was down periodically during the year so there are there are people i know who went and did not ride it so yeah and again i i've heard people uh, quite a few people in in other chats and polls that prefer airy force one by a margin actually as well which I, I surprises me because i think wildcats are fantastic right <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, i agree <laughs> it, it, it it manages to feel like the pacing of the hypers. Do you, you know what I mean? It's it's it, for, yeah, for no, a slightly exactly. mid-size RMT. There was the the way it holds its speed through to the end, and I don't know. It just business picks up after that <laughs> double <laughs> yes. with the lateral. I don't know. Whatever you want to call that Backless. element, I, I that's that's where that's where it, <laughs> you know, all it really does. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm not going to delay this next matchup for you any further here because I know you're dreading this next one. Well, <laughs> winning one percent of people. So uh, winning the battle of Pennsylvania is Wildcats Revenge. Uh, the big right black choice. cat is back. Wildcats Revenge knocks off Skyrush and is moving on to the second round here in the Turbulence Group. So I, I think at the end of the day, that's not one that is shocking a lot of people. Even the people who picked Skyrush were probably nervous when they did so. Yeah, it's a bit of a Hail Mary, right? <laughs> I think it's... Uh, it, it, you're hoping that, like I say, people haven't got out and ridden, ridden Wildcat, but yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all, that. Yeah. So, all right. So now next matchup here, we've got Zadra from Energy Landia going up against Lightning Rod from Dollywood. Now, remember, th this is hard for us to keep track of here because Lightning Rod seems to have gone through so many iterations with the Wood Coaster, just... which still gets ranked with the Steel Coaster as it used to be because people are ranking it as Steel now with majority Steel track. This is the launch version because this high speed chain lift <laughs> which seems like any normal chain lift uh has been added for this year so we'll see how that affects things next year uh but we've got zadra going against lightning rod here and th let me ask you what do, what do you think first which coaster do you think more people picked and what do you think the split was oh I've got a feeling it's, it's going to be somewhere around 50 50. I, that's not me sitting on the fence. I, I generally think I, I find it hard to call, right? <laughs> it's Lightning Rod did well last year. First time in as a steel coaster coming in at number 12. It, yeah, that's, it did. It's that's pretty, very good. pretty strong, right? And, and Zadra's never ranked above 16. Zadra was 24. <laughs> There's quite a big gap, which is criminal, by the way. See, I you agree. know, I've I been agree. I've I been agree. singing Zadra's praises for years, but but you've written Zadra this year, so I, I kind of want to hear you gush about how good it was because Zadra is a major league, you know, top five coaster. That's you know definitely on. on it's the real deal, right? On most it's... people's list, it, it ought to be in your top five. Um, and you're pretty spot on with it being 50 50. The difference was three votes. Uh, as 53 wow. 47 in favor of Zadra. Okay. By, okay. by a couple percent uh, as 53, 47, 23, uh, or yeah, 53, 47. And the difference was, was, was three, uh, three votes. Um, well, this may be your viewers anticipating the Danny Miller effect. 
of, wow. of the traveling to Poland this year. So it could... I was leaning on that heavily. <laughs> now, I'm assuming you went Zadra. Yeah. Okay. I, I couldn't go Lightning Rod. I've not ridden Lightning Rod. It's, it's one you of the... You pull a Rob Dole. <laughs> yeah. It's one, of the, it's one of the steel coasters on this list that haven't ridden yet Lightning Rod. But okay. Yeah, I, I couldn't go against Zadra. Well, it's going to be an RMC RMC matchup. The question is who? Um, taking on Wildcats Revenge in round two is going to be Zadra from Energy Landia, not a <laughs> lightning rod. So, uh, I thought you were going to make me drop the F bomb, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been ready for it. Um, so, yeah, Zadra is moving on. Zadra will take on Wildcats Revenge. Um, so, all right. Now that, now that matchup. That no. one, I <laughs> struggled over even more. I just I, wasn't sure if it would actually happen or not. But now it's happening. It's it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Um. All right. So next matchup, we've got the Battle of the Dinosaurs. We've got Jurassic World Velocicoaster going up against Jurassic Park, the Flying Dinosaur from uh, Universal Studios Japan. And not a huge surprise that almost everybody picking Velocicoaster in this one. Flying Dino has been in the Thrilling 32 before. Um, but you know, we we still struggle to get some ridership out of Japan. Um, you know, it's you know, it's it's never really had the the ridership to be solid here. So I mean, do you do you see an upset happening here? You can't really see it happening, right? It's um it's good to see flying dinosaur get back in. I don't doubt it's it's an incredible ride, right? If it's, I don't know, has it got sort of Velocicoaster level theming on on flying dinosaur as well? Because I don't know, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's. I, I want to ride it one day, but I, I can't see it getting past Velocicoaster, right? I mean, the... <laughs> yeah, um, it it it, does... it had to come up against someone, right? It's um, yeah, and we thought it was a cool matchup, but it is Velocicoaster. It is on uh no n no no luck for uh the flying dinosaur here uh thanks for playing we'll see you next year hopefully um yeah. jurassic world velocicoaster moving on to the next round in the turbulence group uh so we've got one more matchup to wrap up the turbulence group and it'll be nemesis from alton towers uh right there well represented this evening uh going up against phantom's revenge from kennywood uh, just outside of pittsburgh Pennsylvania last year we had a nemesis at 21 phantoms revenge was the last coaster in on the bubble at number 32 um yeah you know these are both rides that you know the really the reasons they're moving down on these lists is because newer rides are coming out ahead of them right I mean they still do very very well um considering yeah. what both of them are um and really a, a pretty I would say a pretty close decision here. Uh, 65 35 uh, in favor of Nemesis is how the uh, okay. went here. So, not surprised that Nemesis is the favorite, but certainly Phantom's Revenge is a ride that you expect some people are going to pick. Yeah. And I think, I think that voting reflects reflects the trend over the last few years, right? It's if you, even if you're looking back further, um, Nemesis has been as high as in the top 10 as, as I think three years ago. Um, yeah. funnily enough, Phantom had its best year in a while that, that same year, but it, it, it could only reach 19. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's capable of getting into that region, but I think, I think you're right. I think with Phantom being 32 last year, I'm a little bit surprised that it's still making an appearance this year with the, yeah. with the new rides that have come in. Um, so yeah, it's obviously, so it's not suffered so much this year has, has Nemesis suffered from, from being closed for a year though. It's, have people potentially not ranked it where it's it's not open because i mean I, I ranked it in the ballot my my personal rankings i don't really tend to rank defunct rides so maybe some people haven't ranked it and 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 think of it as being defunct where it's closed will I, will I, nemesis I, reborn be a new credit and a new ride in the list now, now when are you going to ride that next weekend oh uh, okay so you're going very soon I am, yeah. So okay. it was opening weekend. We're, we're filming this literally just after opening weekend for for Reborn. I, so, I've seen a number of people yeah. being there. Um, you know, crazy Five hour queue. Yeah, it's like crazy <laughs> long lines. Yeah, there was an hour's queue to get in the shop, apparently. But yeah, yeah, I think I think so. Um, yeah. something like that. Um, but, our, yeah. so uh, finishing up the turbulence group and uh, taking on Velocicoaster in the next round will be Nemesis from Alton Towers. So whoo. All right. Excellent. 
All right, so, so we can cheer for that one. Uh, so the Turbulence Absolutely. Group, we have Wildcats Revenge, Zadra, Velocicoaster, and Nemesis. Moving on to the next round, so those rides will take on each other uh, next time. So we're halfway through here uh the uh steel the steel round one of the uh thrilling 32 here what what are your thoughts here uh so far you went for four for four in that group did you i did yeah so i'm i'm pretty happy at the moment you're seven kind of great. great you're 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 sitting pretty pretty right now it's going well yeah it, it, i'm surprised it's gonna it, this isn't gonna look good on the show then if i do too well so let's hope i get a couple wrong mate <laughs> uh, i know well, nothing guys well it's <laughs> I suppose if you really want, we can arrange that. Well, that's, you know, <laughs> I'd rather do well. I mean, you forget, right? If anyone did forget, that's, that's another reason why. Oh, there we go. Former champion. Yeah. Look at that. Former Maggie. champion. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. So there you go. That is awesome. Right. That, that is like. I'm not here for no reason, guys. What is it? What is it? <laughs> like three of a kind, I think, or something. I've got one. Back I don't know. I've got one back there on, on my shelf as well because you know uh 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 Raymond Raymond Mann, former thrilling 32 champion. Of course, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Arthur Poor does not have a champion magnet. <laughs> no, he doesn't deserve one. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to group number three. It's the wicked twister group here, and our first matchup is Expedition G Force from Holiday Park against Conda. From Wallaby, Belgium, and this is another one that uh, you know we really manipulated last year's rankings uh, and last year's trouble. Oh, damn it, Danny! Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so Conda was number four, and Expedition G Force was number eight last year. So uh, Conda was the higher ranked ride last year. Uh, it was also Conda's first year in the Thrilling th Thirty Two, and Conda's a pretty new ride. G Force been around a while, pretty much a perennial top. 10 ride at this point it had been top five for a while it is a former champion um you know this is one that people were uh kind of split on 58 42 but people going with conda more people going okay. with conda going off of last year's rankings so uh i'm curious where you went on this one i'm annoyed you made me decide <laughs> <laughs> this was not one i was happy about either i, I um, figured this is not one you would be happy about well, I'm I'm an EGF guy, right? I I love EGF. It's um, right. and Conda's like the modern EGF, right? So it's it's it, I I still prefer EGF personally. It okay. feels it's got that sort of more raw feeling than Conda. Conda's like smooth to a fault almost. Do, do you know what I mean? It's like it it's yeah, Conda's a great ride. Don't get me wrong. It's uh, but but yeah, EGF's. It's, special for me i love that ride but yeah. i went for conda i went I, for conda i really want to, <laughs> i really want to ride conda because it, it looks like the modern egf right and it looks yeah like and it really is more to it um you i know. can see why people would go with conda and i can see why people say it's it, it's a better ride technically it probably is and i like i say i've picked conda to go through i okay. think i was surprised it got as high as number four last year and EGF was number eight last year, first time outside the top five in at oh, least the, four, the previous four years, right? So yeah, probably longer than that. that. So yeah, yeah. It, it, has Conda managed to hold that position as EGF jumped back up? I don't know. I, I'm 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 starting to think maybe Conda was the wrong choice here, but. Well, and it's like, okay, is it is it like shiny new toy thing again with Conda? Like, is that, yeah. is that it? It's going to settle, and maybe EGF was just having a down year, so it's going to come back up. I mean, there's there's multiple again multiple things at play on this one, right? I can see it going either way. I really can. It's um, and you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be angry either way. You know, it'd just be a shame if I got the wrong pick. But hey, you know. Well, moving on to the second round from uh this matchup is expedition g-force uh that's that's probably the first one that you're gonna be really upset about i wouldn't say upset about it. it's kind of my uh my rob doll moment right <laughs> well, a little bit, but, but but i mean let's let's be honest here um that's probably one that most people i mean a lot of the people are going to be, even though it was 5842, I feel like a lot of the people who are paying attention and watching this year after year and are in contention, 
those are probably the people we're relying on last year's rankings to pick Conda. So that may not be one that hurts you at the end of the day. Yeah, I, and, and again, I, I I can't begrudge exposition G Force moving on. So it's uh yeah, I I'm not too upset about that. But in retrospect, maybe I maybe I would have gone the other way because you know, coming in at number four and then retaining that spot for an overseas ride as well. We've seen other rides like Helix come in at what number five at one point, right? And then drop out of the 32. Or uh, so, yeah, I mean, some of those rides can be pretty volatile, right? So, they you know, can maybe Condos had a big drop, yeah, they, they can be. You are right about that. Um, so Expedition G Force is going to go up against the winner of our next matchup, which is Iron Rattler from Six Flags Fiesta Texas, going up against Ride to Happiness from Plopsaland de Pan, uh, an, another ride that you have been on that I have not yet. Uh, and you know, you sing the Ride to Happiness praises as do many, many others, and uh, you know, people are listening because eighty-eight percent of the people picked Ride to Happiness, Ride to Happiness to advance in this yeah, year it, it was higher last year it was number seven uh which is very very impressive iron rattler which had usually be, always been right around the top 10 had dropped down to 20 so okay yeah so iron rattler is trending in that direction right it's um it's it, it's not the new rmc anymore there's mm-hmm. bigger and better ones out there now and it, it's not surprising to see iron rattler start dropping away and yeah. i mean you've seen pretty much everyone that goes and rides ride to happiness sings its praises right it's um it's certainly it time that travel. way. I, I haven't met anyone who has anything bad to say about it at this point. Yeah, it's it's hard to have something bad to say about it. If <laughs> anything, like the only bad thing I'd have to say about it is the, the novelty does wear off. If you've written it a lot, right, you actually find yourself kind of wishing you get that completely bonkers spinning ride. You get like one in 10 that's absolutely nuts. And yeah. then you're almost disappointed not to get that ride, yeah. which is stupid because it's great anyway. Yeah, you're like, oh, but that one I had before, it was it was absolutely nuts. And you're kind of searching for that one again. But yeah, you know, that's it's um, almost like uh, criticizing a ride for being too good on occasions. Well, and that's the tricky, <laughs> that's the tricky thing with spinning rides, right? I mean consistency, right? It's not consistent. You could you yeah. could ride it and get a dud ride. It'd still be good, but you can get rides that are just absolutely bonkers. Ride. Like I, I've had, I've had one or two bonkers rides on Time Traveler, and I've had a couple that are, you know, still great, but not quite as bonkers as some of the other ones. And it's like you're not disappointed, but you're like, ah, but if only it could have been as good as that other one that we had earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I can, I can totally, totally relate to that for sure. And even, uh, even just regular spinning mouse rides are like that too. You know, it's like, oh, okay, we got a really good unbalanced ride on that one, but then that other one over there, you know, uh, you know, uh, Chris told us that we got to sit on the opposite ends and <laughs> don't spin it all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't get it right every time, right? But like no, I, say. I, I guess not, especially if people don't physics. Um, but <laughs> at any rate, uh, moving on to take on Expedition G Force is the ride to happiness from Plopsaland. Moving on, so uh, Andy, your absence is being felt because all the European rides are moving on. <laughs> see. Yeah, I haven't been taken. No, I'll be interested to see what the split actually is once we get to the uh, the last sixteen. Well, yeah, that's 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 true here. We'll have to see uh, how that works out. Um, all right. So next matchup, we've got one that is has been a debate for years and years and years and years. Right? You've got the Maverick fan yeah. from Cedar Point. You've got the Terran fans from Fantasia Land. We decided to settle that here and put the two up against each other: Maverick versus Terran here in the Wicked Twister group. Um, you know, I rank these very close to one another. Um, you know, I love Taryn. I, I think everything about it is beautiful. It's a wonderful ride. Um, to me, Maverick, the intensity and the snappiness of Maverick is just enough to outweigh some of the other things that Taryn has going for it, like the theme and everything. Um, I, I put Ter- or uh, Maverick ever so slightly higher uh, myself, but it's very, very close. Um, I, I was quite a bit surprised to see 95% of people picking Maverick here. That, that one seemed uh, very skewed to me. Maverick was 10 last year. Taryn was all the way down at 25, which seems like yeah. it could be an outlier because Taryn has been much higher. Um, You know, in, in many years, Taryn had outranked Maverick a number of years, but maybe it's just dropping too. So I'm, I'm kind of curious what you think about that. 
Yeah, like I say, that was a big drop last year for Taron, right? And the funny thing is, I don't think they're actually that comparable as rides, apart from the fact they're both Intamin multi-launch LSMs. They're very I, I different. Feel like that's you know? why people compare them, even though they. Aside from that, there's really not much. Well, to... Taron was kind of the first. Like sort of the like the next one that people talked about, right? Maybe after Maverick. I don't know if it was like the next one they built, but yeah, it always seemed to be that one that people would compare to Maverick. But the, the more you look at it, they're, they're very different rides, you know. And like you say, Maverick's a far more intense ride. Taron's kind of more of an experience, right? With Glugheim and everything about it, the theme in sure much much more of an experience but i think if you're solely looking at the coaster then you, i don't think you could look past maverick really and it, it's always done pretty well in this poll right maverick it's um it's been it has been consistent so yeah i i, I can't see anything but maverick moving on i don't think and and by the sounds of it people have the same opinion yeah and and like i said earlier maverick certainly has seen a resurgence since its new restraints a number of years ago you know it's it's definitely it's definitely been helped uh by that Oof. because it it wasn't uh it, it yeah, wasn't i couldn't imagine type... riding it with the hard ones actually those those stangle dives might have been a bit um questionable for, for me it wasn't too bad because i'm so damn short but if you're a little bit tall you go under them I mean, <laughs> yeah it's like right in the side of your cheekbone or side of your head or even if you're tall enough you know the side of your neck right for me if mm. if i was headbanging it was sort of hitting me up here so, you know, even though it's, I mean, it's better than your ear or your neck that, you know, hitting you <laughs> inside the head. I have a hard, I have a hard melon. So, you know, it, yeah. it doesn't, doesn't really matter to me, but certainly the soft. I'm going to dispute that. Well, certainly the soft <laughs> are still much better. Um, but the trains on Terran are better still. Uh, Absolutely. You know, yeah. it may, may not be enough to offset here. Uh it is Maverick moving on. So uh, not a huge surprise. It doesn't sound like most people getting that one right. Um, you know, certainly an interesting matchup. But at the end of the day, I think most people were uh, most people were were set on picking Maverick there. And rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, Maverick moving on. All right. Final matchup in the Wicked Twister group. And it's two rides that uh, we rode together this past summer. We have Letko from Legendia in Poland. A nice uh, Vacoma coaster there. Uh, one of the new next gen Vacoma coasters going up against Taiga from Linamaki in Finland, a ride that quite frankly was one of our favorites on the entire trip. Um, you know, yeah. one that deserves every bit of talk that uh, I've given it and certainly others have given it since they've ridden it. Um, and I guess people have been listening and maybe maybe they maybe they watched your vlo your vlogs over there on south coasters you've been uh you've been re you've been posting sort of the denmark section of the trip uh yeah here you got back I, in but uh all of our european uh adventures over there from this past summer over on your channel there at south coasters too and we we talked quite a bit about taiga on that linamaki video yeah, well, I know Tiger was one that you particularly enjoyed, wasn't it, Danny? Not to say I didn't, but I, we had a hell of a day riding Tiger, to be honest, didn't we? It's um, yeah, it, it's another masterpiece. You know, the, the the way it's there on the side of the hill, the the the, the way it's, I don't know, that that layout is so interesting. The way they've managed to fit that into that 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 plot, right? It's yeah. um, and yeah, it's a great layout too. You know, good well, mixture of forces. Feels like kind of a bit. <laughs> bit more old school Intamin than say something yeah. like Taron. I don't know. It's just something about the forces on it. It's, it, it, it's powerful. It's it, it had, it had more Maverick to it than, you know, it's, it's to me, it was far superior to Taron. It had far, oh, more, yeah. it had far more Maverick to it. It felt mo much more like Maverick than it did Taron. It felt like Maverick with the Taron Velocicoaster style trains. Um, yeah. It had the compactness and the zip of Maverick. It had the the smoothness of a Terran and a Velocicoaster, and it sort of had the intensity of a Velocicoaster and a Maverick. You know, it really had kind of had the best of all of those rides, I think. It And it had some of the floaty moments that, you know, a Velocicoaster has in its first half. Uh, you know, Maverick doesn't really have those. Uh, it's got a couple of good hang time spots. Uh, the one thing I appreciate about Taiga was the, I didn't realize how much the terrain factored into that ride. You know, that first yeah. launch, you do that zero G winder, and then you do sort of this overbank turn. And instead of going up, you just go down again, uh, down to yeah. the side there. And then, you know, after the top hat, 
you know, the top hat just is kind of a, it's kind of an unassuming looking top hat, but you go up into that stall and then the drop, the stall almost serves as like the midway point of a double down. Cause you drop off the top hat, go into the stall. And then there's this big ass drop on the other side of it, right into yeah. a speed, speed hill at the lowest point of the ride, which is, which is nuts. Um, it almost de depanted me um, on that. <laughs> a, couple of times. a little yeet. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot. Of yeet. <laughs> yeet. Um, oh, so yeah, uh, ninety-one percent of the people picking Tyga here. So I, I think uh, people have been watching that vlog of yours and and saw singing the praises there and uh, just That's been true. listening to what we've been saying about it. Because uh, well, if they uh, if they watched all the vlogs, they wouldn't discount Let Coaster completely because well, that is well, not to be underestimated, right? That's, that's a power powerhouse of a ride, Lek. It's uh, again, it, it is another compact, powerful little ride, and mm -hmm. yeah. I, I like Lek a lot, right? I mean, yeah. I don't think it's as good as Tiger. So, but I, you know, I didn't want to not talk about it because it's it's fantastic. <laughs> Lek really There's a lot fantastic. of parks that could do with a Lek coaster, right? Oh yeah, Lek Lek is fantastic. I mean, so so many parks could use a ride like that. You know, like a Dorney Park could use a ride like that. That's not super tall, but you know, has you know, pretty compact. I mean, I, I think if you go back, if you watch uh, your Legendia video there, where we where we talk about Lek, you have a couple of POVs on there too. I, I think you mm. hear us talking. And at one point, I think I said something like, boy, it has a lot of Maverick in it. And it might yeah. not have been on the POV. It might've been afterwards, but I think we're, we're sort of talking about it after our first couple rides and Lek has an awful lot of Maverick in it as well. Um, certainly yeah. it's, it's a, it's a lift hill coaster as opposed to a launch coaster. Um, but you know, Tyga and Lek are very, very similar in many ways. Yeah. But I again, I, I couldn't see past Tiger for this one. And has Lek even ever been in before? No, it's been in the top 50. Uh, it's never okay. been in the Thrilling 32 before, so this is the first time it's in the 32. That, that, well, that... let's celebrate its inclusion, but I, I don't think it goes any further. Yes, uh, congratulations uh, to Lek for making the Thrilling 32. Thanks for playing. It is Tyga moving on uh, to the next round. So in the Wicked Twister group, we'll have Expedition G-Force going up against Ride to Happiness. That's that, that's a big one coming up. Uh, and Maverick will go up against Tyga. Um, neither of those are are ones that that I envy trying to decide. We're uh, setting up some matchups here, aren't we, Danny? Uh, well, they, they're certainly intentional. <laughs> um, all right. So, shall we move on to our fourth and final group for the evening here? Yes. Absolutely. Let's go to the Moon Salt Scramble group, and our first matchup is a battle of the big bad uh, fourth dimension or fifth dimension, whatever you want to call them. Coasters. We've got X two from Six Flags Magic Mountain going up against Asia Nika from Fuji Q Highland, and this is one of those where it's like, okay, X two California popular, lots of riders, right? Asian Ica, yeah. basically a bigger, faster, longer, crazier X2. On paper, Asian Ica should be the better ride, right? If you go by the stats, but you also look it's, at it's it's the battle of ridership, isn't it? It's pretty much, right? <laughs> and I, I mean I think so. Yeah, and three quarters of the people, you know, 77% picking X2 here. Yeah. Um, and I I guess I guess people are just going with ridership here right and asian ike has been in in the past uh it was number 18 last year x2 was number 11 so i guess we could argue that people are going off of last year's rankings too for that and that's probably that's obviously that's the, the closest together they've been i think asian ike has been in before and it's been in the top 50 but x2 tends to be a top 10 coaster in, in this poll right so yeah it's it's been top 10 for a number of years it's kind of it, it's kind of started to slip out just with more new rides, uh, yeah. like a Conda coming in. You know, Tyga was top 10 last year as well. Those rides hadn't been in before. Um, so, you know, it's slipping out due to that a little bit, but it's still been very, very strong. Uh, well, Asian Ike is one of those rides that the pe people have ridden it tend to rank it very highly, right? There's a lot yes. of people out there that have it. There's their one, two rides, that, you know? So, right. again, it's it feels like a little bit of a look where I've been coaster. Major Nike. <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah. But, yeah. Maybe. I mean, it's one of those things where if, if they've ridden both of them, they probably put Asian Nike a little bit higher just to, yeah. to think about it and say, Oh, that one's better. And I can see that. 
Right. So, and and again, I don't know where you rank X2. I've got it in my top 10, wrote it for the first time this year, and it is nuts. You know, it is. it's it's not the smoothest coaster. You know, I, don't, I don't think you expect that, but again, <laughs> it doesn't outside happen. of... Yeah, outside of going to Asia, right? There's nothing else like it out there you can ride, and it's just it's unique. I think I think it's worthy of that sort of top ten status in a, in a poll. And yeah, if Asian Ica really is a bigger, badder, better version of X2, it probably deserves to be equal to, if not higher. But I, I would I, think I, so. I mean, I I honestly think that uh, if and when I ever get to Japan and ride Asian Ica, it's probably one that I'll rank as high as X two, if not a little bit higher, unless it's yeah. there's just something flat out wrong with it, which I haven't heard anyone say. Uh, yeah. You know, half my operations maybe that apparently maybe got awful that's not something Q, that but... I tend to care about too much because <laughs> operations suck pretty much anywhere these days. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is definitely a tough one to pick, but, uh, three quarters of people going with X2. Um, so moving on to the second round here in the Moonsault Scramble group is X2 from Six Lag Jamaica. So ridership at least seems to be, uh, pushing X2 through here, at least for another year. Um, so X2 gets the privilege to play the winner of the next matchup, which is Schwer Deskernen from Hansha Park. In Germany, going up against Steel Vengeance from Cedar Point, the defending champ. Um, every single person picking Steel Vengeance to win this one. Don't know if we should consider that a surprise at all. I personally do. don't. Um, I mean, so, I mean, you, I haven't been on Karnan because that ride was closed when we were there. It had some technical issues the day we were there. Um, you have been on it, right? So I have, the, yeah, a couple so of years ago. You probably have a you probably have a few nice things to say about Karnan anyways. I I I, I, I love Karnan. You know, I, I think it's a great ride. It's um was it 13 last year in the poll? Um, um first time it was in as well, if I'm not wrong. It it was in and yeah, it was 13 last year. It was it was in a couple of years ago, like before yeah. we even went over like 20, I think maybe the year. Okay, so quite that would have been quite a while back then. Yeah. But um yeah, I I was just happy to see it get some recognition last year, right? When it when it was number 13, because yeah, I, I think it's a great ride. It's um it, again, it's got the theme in, it's got it's got intensity, it's got it's got everything really it's um yeah funny enough it's, i'm gonna i'm gonna compare it to a ride i criticized earlier it's, it feels a bit sky rushy in the layout you know once you get into the low sort of fast okay. section of it it's kind of it gave me sky rush vibes a little bit but... i don't know if i've heard that comparison for karnan before but i, I guess thinking about what it does it, it kind of makes some sense yeah yeah but the bit the low section sort of after after the big element but, I see. yeah the, the, the drop on it's fantastic as well if you, i mean i know how much you raved about egf's drop and i love egf's drop yeah karnan's is, is probably better Ooh. <laughs> it's sim okay. similar that's, that's why i'm brave yeah it's um it's it's very good so yeah but I, like i said i think it's run into a bit of a brick wall in this poll right um sure yeah n not surprised 100 percent of people have, have chosen steel vengeance was it undisputed champ yeah one really? of these years what yeah one of these years will give karnan a fair matchup i feel like we've screwed it the first couple of years it's been in but you know you've you've, you've got to pay your dues in the thrilling 32 a little bit here um so it yeah. is steel vengeance moving on steel vengeance will take on x2 in the next round um so uh thanks for playing shvertis karnan we'll see you next year maybe um <laughs> let's go over to the other side of this group now and we've got a battle we've got a battle of bnms and a battle of intamins to finish us out tonight battle of bnms here we've got shambhala from Puerto ventura in spain which uh you'll be going on uh in a few months here i will uh, you're you're heading I'm very down. excited <laughs> going against Fury 325 from Carowinds, a former multi-time champion. Uh, you know, Shambhala is one of those rides that we don't get to talk about a whole heck of a lot because neither Andy nor myself have been on it. Don't really have any plans, at least in the next year or two, to probably go ride it. But it's always done very well. Um, I think it's been top 15 uh, on at least a couple of occasions, uh, at least once that I can recall. I think it was as high as 12 once without actually looking at my history sheet. It was 19 last year. Fury 325 was number six last year, which was a little low for Fury. Fury's kind of always been top three-ish, I think. So, yeah. you know, is the... It has has the shine worn off of Fury three two five a little bit, and 
you know, if so, is it enough for a ride like Shambhala to catch it? I don't know. Shambhala is not a new ride, so maybe it's not catching it. But, uh, um, you know, 98% of people going with Fury 325 here. So I, I think a, an overwhelming majority here. But, um, you know, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a surprise in, in, in that the people are going for Fury. Um, Shambhala. I mean, p- people talk about it being the being the best hyper, right? And I suppose this poll bears that out, really, because I don't think there's another BNM hyper in the poll, is there? Um, as much as as much as you guys bemoan the fact that Goliath doesn't make it anymore, but um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm the only European coaster enthusiast that hasn't ridden Shambhala, to be honest. So like, <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting out there and riding it. It looks fantastic, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you look at Sorry. the ride list, if you look at the ride list over the years, right? I mean, we've had rides like Mako, uh, Behemoth, Diamondback, Apollo's Chariot, Nitro. You know, cer- certainly before we had a, a bigger European following and before we had voters of ours that had been to Europe, you know, we had a lot of those rides and you like almost all the BNM hypers uh, yeah. from North America were in, uh, you know, go, even Goliath from La Ronde was in once or twice. Uh, Goliath from over Georgia um, was in, you know, Intimidator from Carowinds or Thunder Striker now, uh, you know, that was We've in. seen Silver Star in as well. Yeah, in S- past, Silver, Star, we? Silver Star was one of the last, Silver Star and Mako were two of the last holdouts, right? I mean, they were, yeah. in, I think both of them were in, Last year, um, okay. let's see, Silver Star or was Silver Star out? No, Silver Star and Mako finally were out last year. Mako was 33, I guess it looks like, and Silver Star was 39, Behemoth was 37. Um, so a lot of those, you know, Goliath from over Georgia was 42 last year, so a lot of those rides had just fallen out of the poll yeah. in recent years. Um, so yeah. Uh, you know, Shambhala, really the last BNM hyper that I that I think still in here. Uh, Fury three two five, um, is is still in, but it's really a giga coaster. I mean, one thing we didn't talk about a whole lot in the selection show is the fact that Leviathan isn't even in the thrilling thirty two this year. So yeah. uh, even one of the BNM gigas is no longer here. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can't hold that place forever. A lot of new rides coming out. <laughs> yeah, uh... Leviathan is a former champion, so. Yeah, wow! I didn't, I didn't realize it won it, but yeah, yeah it's um, in, uh, year, year. Is that the first? Is that the first former champion to to drop out of the entire uh, thirty two? Superman, the ride from New England, I think was out last okay. year. Yeah, yeah, that was thirty eight last year. Leviathan was thirty, so Superman was the first like former champion to not make it. Uh, Leviathan mm-hmm. now joining it, and Superman isn't in this year either. Um, no. so, uh, so I mean. Well, at the end of the day, do you do you see a possibility of an upset here? Is it? I I don't really see an upset here, to be honest. Again, Fury, Fury one of the ones I haven't ridden yet. Um, but yeah, but from all accounts, I I think Fury moves on here. It's um again the the history would tell you that, and uh, yeah, I can't see past Fury. Uh, it is Fury three two five moving on here. So uh, Shambhala, thanks for playing Fury three two five. Moving on to round two in the Moon Salt Scramble Group. All right, uh, last matchup for the evening here. It's the Battle of the Intamins. We've got Hyperion from Energylandia going up against Millennium Force from Cedar Point. Uh, new school versus old school, right? I mean, uh, yep. we've ridden Hyperion together. Um, Hyperion was definitely one of those rides that surprised the absolute hell out of me. I mean, just from a pure layout perspective, Hyperion's one of those that it's like, uh, okay, it could be really good and it could just kind of be okay. But Hyperion yeah. is one of those rides that, you know, it gets the absolute best out of every element that it does. I think, you know, even that, even that little floater hill there, that's kind of just whatever, you know, it's, 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 yeah. it's, there's not a ton of airtime there. There's a little bit of floating airtime, like BNM hyper type of airtime, but it's almost a nice little change of pacing a little bit you know you've got all these intense moments these intense hills and these really rapid maneuvers it's 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 almost sort of unexpected uh to have a hill like that that's just kind of a lilty hill in the middle of all that and that almost makes it fun in a different sort of way right i mean it it almost breaks the the sort of two halves of the ride up a little bit right it's um it's almost like a mid course without being a mid course (laughs) well yeah i mean that i was kind of i was kind of thinking that too you know if if every ride that had a mid course break run just had a tall hill that was kind of just lilty and you got you know a little bit floater air time you know i i would sign up for that on on most of my hyper 
for coasters, right? I mean, I get why the yeah. middle is there, but um, you know, Hyperion well, like was number 41 last year till Millennium Force is number 23. So obviously, I mean, just to get into the thrilling 32, we already know Hyperion's jumped at least nine spots, right? That's an interesting one, Hyperion, right? Because it, it, it's it's had quite a lot of criticism over the years. I've heard like people complaining it's it's a bit rattly and 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 stuff like that. I mean, I don't think we experienced that right i, I mean the funny I, thing is i can see i can see on the end seats i can see people finding a rattle if you're but looking not, for it's it not right? really a rat it's not really a rat <laughs> it's, it's it's a little bit of a vibration if nothing else and it's and it's the same type of vibration that you get on a ride like sky rush like it's not something that's ruining the ride for you so no you know, and the lap bars are very, very comfortable on Hyperion. And the thing that impressed me about it, and I said this just walking up to it, it's big. Like, you don't realize how big yeah. the ride is until you go there. Like, it's it's like 260 feet or something. Like, yeah, big ride. 267, maybe, I think, or something. Yeah, well, it, it drops further than that into the tunnel, right? So yeah, it's, it's, it's maybe it's a 280 type bigger. drop. Yeah. It's damn near a giga coaster and it's fast and it's fast the entire way through, especially even, yeah. you know, save that Lilty Hill there. It flies through everything. And the end of it being so close to the ground, you, you have so much speed the entire time. And it's, it's very, very impressive. Um, yeah, And you know, you could say the same about millennium force in a lot of ways. Um, I, I think Hyperion is more intense than millennium force, uh, but they do have a lot of similarities where millennium force has a lot of low to the ground aspects at times where it's really just carrying speed and it's about being a speed-based ride as opposed yep. to a pure airtime uh based ride but it has its its nice airtime moments in it as well and it's got a couple of big hills just like hyperion does um so you know i don't think people people like to compare these two in terms of them being intimate coasters that are really big and fast but i think in terms of the layout they kind of do share some similarities as well it's it's almost as if if conda's new egf hyperion's new millennium force right? i it's... i think that's a very very fair analogy i think that's very valid and yeah millennium force is it's fantastic obviously the setting on the lake and everything about millennium force you know it's iconic it's been around for, for forever now yeah. and like oh, yeah. it's always it's always done pretty well in this poll it's dropped off a little bit in the last couple of years and again like you say hyperion not being in the 32 last year which again there's another one i think was a travesty although i will say when we rode Hyperion last year, I enjoyed it a lot more than I did the first time round. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it the first time I went to Energy Land, yeah, but yeah, I didn't have it last year. quite as high as I did. But okay. something about that ride last year, it was it was hitting hard last year. <laughs> it was. It was yeah, um... Hyperion was def was definitely a mood. Um, you know, I still like Zadra a little bit better, but uh, I. Yeah. I would find it hard to argue too much with with anybody who likes, and there are people out there who still uh, like Hyperion a little better than than Zadra. So, um, well, I I think it gives Energy Landia the best one to punch out there. Uh, so. I I think that's there. There's a there's a very there's a very strong case for that. I think, um, and this is one that people were very split on a uh, sixty forty, but in favor of Hyperion. Okay. So people are people jump on the Hyperion train here, despite uh, the previous year's ranking, which kind of bucks the trend from the rest of the. Pick. Yeah, that is interesting, actually, because people tend to have been going with that. And there's nothing that would suggest Hyperion's going to dethrone Millennium Force apart from the Danny Miller effect. So I suppose let's maybe find they out watched if, your vlog. Um, well, maybe, maybe, but. Like I say, and we 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 had a good. I think we might have even mentioned on the blog that we preferred it to Millennium Force. So I I know I see. So, um, all right. So the final coaster, moving on to round two in the thrilling thirty-two steel coasters, is Hyperion <laughs> from yeah. Energy Landia is moving on. So result scramble group. Uh, we've got X two which will take on defending champion steel vengeance. And we've got fury 325 going up against Hyperion. So uh, there we have it. There are steel coasters. Um, again, here's, here's a uh, recap of what we had today. Uh, Iron Gwazi knocked off twisted timbers. Helix beats airy force one untamed beats fly intimidator. 305 beats uh, Pantheon. We've got Wildcats Revenge beating Skyrush, Zadra beating Lightning Rod, Velocicoaster beating Flying Dinosaur, Nemesis knocking off Phantom's Revenge, 
We have G-Force, Expedition G-Force knocking off Konda, Ride to Happiness beating Iron Rattler, Maverick beating Terran, Taiga beating Lek Coaster, and finally the group we just wrapped up, X-2 beating Asia Nika, Steel Vengeance beating Schwertus Karen, and Fury 325 beating Shambhala, and Hyperion beating Millennium Force. So uh, we only got a couple minutes left here before Zoom kicks us off, but uh, Alex, yes. do you have final thoughts on uh, the carnage that has ensued uh, for many people? Yeah, well, I, I, I'm pretty happy. I think I'm 14, 14 for 16 in that round, which surprises me a little bit. I think the next round is where the real carnage happens, Danny. I think uh, that, <laughs> as tough as that round was, and the, 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 there were a few tough pick up picks there, I think. But I think next round is where we really see some spicy matches, right? Yeah, there, there's there's some tough ones coming up, right? I mean, you've got Iron Gwazi and Helix. Um, you know, if, if even that Fury Hyperion one that we, that we just yeah. ended up getting to. Uh, Maverick Taiga, G Force, Ride to Happiness. I mean, there's there's a number of really really good um, w- Wildcat Zadra. I mean, geez, the yeah, <laughs> the the list goes on. And that's just the steel side. I mean, the the Wood Coasters uh, are are you know there's some tough ones over there too. Uh, yeah. we'll see after that goes um all right so with that we thank you for joining us and alex thank you for joining us here in the thrilling oh, no problem man. If, thank uh, you. If, if andy cho- chooses uh not to return after all the uh year <laughs> rides decided to advance uh maybe we'll have to have you on again sometime but it's nice to know we've got somebody from europe who can uh back up uh back up all the talk that these european rides do here in these polls yeah, and like I said, Danny, I appreciate you having me on, man. I've enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, if I'm on again, that'll be great. If Andy's back, yeah. we'll enjoy his particular brand of uh, of criticism, <laughs> yeah. of critical thinking. Of exactly. critical Just, thinking, that's right. There we go, yeah. All right, so uh, thank you all for joining us. Be on the lookout uh, for the next round's results here in the coming weeks. Uh, I am Danny Miller from Binghamton, New York. Oh, and I'm Alex Baker from Portsmouth, England. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Right on. Thanks, guys. Take care.